Okay, I'll admit it. We're 21 days into October so far, and I've only produced a single scary 40k lore video. And that's an absolute tragedy. It needs to be corrected immediately. But they can't just all be grimdark story hours. We need to dive into some grimdark mysteries as well. And what more creepy and obscure mystery could there be than the Processional of the Damned? Something that I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that the vast majority of the 40k community has never heard of, as it was only ever spoken of in the now defunct Rogue Trader RPG system. And when you first read about it, this thing seems pretty cut and dry. A massive graveyard of ships that lures in adventurers with promises of riches untold and lost archaeotech, and then subsequently drives all of them into madness. At first glance, it doesn't seem that out of place for Warhammer 40k. But when you start to dive a little bit deeper and really begin to examine what's going on here, the creep factor gets kicked up into an entirely different level. Now, for example, this massive graveyard of a million million ships from across space and time is not the remnants of some great ancient battle. Well, in fact, it seems as if something is calling them all here. A voice in the darkness that beckons the rotten and decayed wrecks of ships and the damned souls of their crew to travel hundreds of thousands of light years to join in a parade of rot. And it's not just ships. Whatever evil presence lurks here is so powerful that it's been able to call upon the carcasses of dead planets as well. But what exactly is the Processional of the Damned? Who discovered it and what purpose does it serve? What are some of the theories that exist for what is really going on with this thing? And what's with those creepy ghostly astronauts that drift about in the shadows of dead vessels? Well, today we're going to be getting to the bottom of that and a whole lot more. But before we dive headfirst into the grimdark, a quick shout out to this video's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Into the AM, makers of some of the best graphic tees that you can get on the internet, and also one of the longest running sponsors that we've ever had on this channel. You've probably seen me wearing their shirts a ton in all of my other videos, even the ones that aren't sponsored by Into the AM, and that's because they are by far some of the comfiest shirts that I own. I wear them almost every single day, and at this point, I think I own like 30 of them. Their designs are just so colorful and unique, and as a bigger guy, I appreciate that they're a little bit longer than normal t-shirts. The big news this week is that Into the AM just launched their fall collection. And honestly, it really couldn't have come at a better time for me personally. A big cold front just rolled through the Tampa Bay area. It, it's absolutely freezing outside. It's like 72 degrees. It's ridiculous. So with the changing of the weather, that means I've got to change my style as well. <laughs> Much better. I love all the stuff that they've added to their store, and they've launched a great collection of different colors for their pullovers, hoodies, henleys, and button-ups. I've had a chance to wear their joggers, and they may be the comfiest pants that I own. They also still have all of their not-so-normal graphic tees and all their bestsellers as well. Go check out Into the AM if you want to upgrade your wardrobe and elevate your style. They have basic tees for a far lesser minimal look, and their graphic tees if you want to stand out. So click on the link in the description of this video to save 10% off your order. You can even make a pack and bundle some shirts together to save even more money. And that stacks with my coupon code WESHAMMER. Again, click on the link in the description of this video or use coupon code WESHAMMER at checkout to save 10% off your entire order. Big thanks to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. Although there is no shortage of grimdark, creepy mysteries within the vast labyrinthian lore of Warhammer 40k, the Processional of the Damned remains as one of its creepiest and most obscure. From port to port and scumbar to scumbar, there are whispered tales overheard across the Cronus Expanse that speak of a region haunted by the past and the future. A realm where death holds no court, where every law of time and space are violated in the most despicable ways imaginable. A realm where half-glimpsed specters of things yet to come linger on the edge of vision, where Vox channels burst to life as hundreds of voices hail a ship in unison before abruptly cutting to cold, dead static. These stories speak of a vast graveyard of ships that seem to call the lost souls and their spacefaring vessels from across space and time to a singular location for unknown reasons. Those that believe such tales claim that every peril, every voice, and every half-glimpsed figure that plagued the region are in fact an aspect of a malevolent evil presence that lurks in the very heart of the system. The Processional of the Damned, as it has come to be known, is located in the blighted region of the Cronus Expanse known as the Accursed Dements. It is a vast graveyard of ships of impossible size and scale, larger than anything else encountered within the entirety of the Cronus Expanse itself. It is comprised of a million million moldering dead ships from across space and time that spread out across countless millions of kilometers, all of which orbiting a massive black star that writhes and flickers with tendrils of dark matter. A star not of any natural origin and one that is believed to have some innate connection to the warp. 
as some of the vessels caught within the dark star's gravitational field is seem to be so ancient that there exist no intact records of their patterns. The craziest thing of all is that the vast majority of these ships are not those of would-be explorers that ended up venturing too deep into this cursed realm attempting to make a name for themselves. As strange as it sounds, what really appears to be going on here is that whenever a ship is critically wounded and its crew slain anywhere in the galaxy, is something calls out to them. A voice that none but the ship's machine spirit and the lost souls of those slain aboard can hear, that guides them to their final resting place. A carrion call that beckons the vessel to join its fetid kin in a grim entropic parade. But it gets even crazier than that, as the processional of the damned doesn't exist as just a vast sea of space hulks. Whatever is beckoning all of those wrecks together is so powerful that there are even dead worlds, moons, and planetoids that have answered its call, their massive rotund carcasses jostling for position amongst their smaller siblings. How, when, and why the processional of the dam came to be is a mystery that is yet to be solved by mankind. If there ever existed a living creature that knew exactly what was going on here, they've either gone into hiding, or more likely, their entire species was confined to the halls of extinction long ago. Despite the dangers, the exploring and looting of space hulks can be an incredibly lucrative, if risky, profession, and the rumors of an entire graveyard with more ships than any crew could possibly explore in a given lifetime, let alone the fact that many of them are from every point in history and could potentially contain priceless lost archaeotech, is a lead far too good to pass up for most. In truth, it has been visited many times in the past by imperial explorers, lowly pirates, adventurers of all sorts, and of course noble rogue traders. It most never return. Whether they lost their life to an unforeseen accident, a treachery, or something far more disturbing is a truth that they took with them to their early graves. Those who have made it back out with their sanity intact seldom speak of what they encountered. Although written records and documents on the procession are exceedingly rare, there are a few credible accounts, the most prominent of which being the one penned by the man who first discovered it, or at the very least, the first one to have explored it and made it back out alive. This man was the legendary rogue trader and captain of the righteous crusader, Wrath Umbolt. One of his first-hand accounts stated that he and his crew believed the very void itself was haunted by a strange presence that stalked the crew upon darkened decks. They witnessed eerie, indescribable patterns that swirled across their auspex grids, and their ship's machine spirit had become disturbed and unreliable. The astropaths as well had become so erratic that they needed to be sedated the entire time they were in the region. And although many of his men returned from their exploration of the wrecks with a bountiful harvest of treasure and Xenos artifacts, it was far more common for them to return driven completely mad, lost in the ethereal grip of insanity. Many more still it didn't return at all, swallowed up by the processional or lured into the frozen emptiness of the void by Auspex ghosts and malfunctioning tech devices. Humboldt was so perplexed by the procession that he dedicated a great deal of time and resources to cataloging all of its strange phenomena. Through his studies, he was able to determine that the gravitational orbit of the various rings of dead ships didn't function like one would expect. Instead of everything circling in unison, gradually getting closer to the star at the center, some of the wrecks appeared to be drawn in at a quicker pace, while other ones were being pushed away. He noticed that the ships closest to the star were by far more ancient and decayed than all of the rest, but something wasn't adding up, as upon closer inspection, he and the crew were able to observe certain markings and dates on their hulls that indicated many of these moldering wrecks were of much newer creation. It was as if they had been aged tens of thousands of years in at most a couple of centuries. All of his research is kept under lock and key and only allowed to be examined by a select few individuals with the highest of clearances, and amongst those permitted to study them, a handful of theories have emerged. One theory states that the processional exists in an area of space where time overlaps itself, its vast rings of wrecked ships existing in multiple times simultaneously. The proponents of this theory believe that if one was to travel in a direct line towards the black star at the center, they would be stepping forward and backwards in time with each ring they pass through. A variation of this theory suggests that the closer one gets to the star, the faster time begins to speed up, relative to the outside universe meaning that an individual standing within the star's inner ring may exist thousands of years in the future as compared to their crewmate that holds a position in the outer ring. There are others still that believe that the black star that all of these ships are orbiting is no star at all, and in fact is a yet unidentified Xenos life form, or that it is potentially an undocumented variant of black hole. 
There are even some that believe that the star is the shadow of a vast and terrible creature that exists outside of our universe, that it is the ghostly impression of a higher dimensional being. Even though we can't perceive the entirety of this entity, it still lurks nearby and is capable of manipulating time, space, and matter of all forms within the physical universe. It is worth pointing out that since these documents are so highly classified and the only ones permitted to read them are of incredibly high importance, it, most of these individuals have never left the safety of their offices and actually visited this place to conduct their studies. If they were so inclined to test the veracity of their theories, they may dispatch a handful of menials and hirelings to investigate further, subsequently damning thousands of souls to their deaths. The confusion and misinformation surrounding the processional was exacerbated even further by Humboldt himself, as there was a strange, almost panicked way he wrote them that stood in stark contrast to his traditionally calm and collected personality. In addition, the first-hand accounts of his crew were difficult to make sense of. The astropaths recorded maddening visions of unknown entities, and the lunatic ramblings of his crew were deemed too irrational to be included in the records, as they spoke of entire civilizations and even species being tortured and sacrificed upon the altars of forbidden powers. They whispered the nonsensical names of ancient gods and forces older than the universe itself. Humboldt had become convinced that the dark light at the center was in fact the literal incarnation of death, or at the very least, an ancient and forgotten Xenos god of decay. Out of all of the mysteries surrounding this place, perhaps the greatest and most maddening riddle that the scholars of the Mechanicus and Ordo Calexus have attempted to solve is that of the Space Hulks themselves. Where did they all come from? The Coronis Expanse is a pretty huge place, and there have of course been tons of ships that have been lost within it over time for one reason or another. But even if you were to add them all together, they in no way come even remotely close to just how many wrecks make up the processional of the damned. As something else is going on here. Many of the scholars who have studied the phenomena point to the warp as the most prominent culprit. Now, strange things happen in the warp all the time, as it's not subject to the same laws that those who dwell within the material universe must abide by. A ship lost while traversing the Sea of Souls could well end up on the other side of the galaxy if they were to even veer ever so slightly off course. Because of this, many believe that the processional exists as a graveyard for ships lost within the Immaterium. However, why they are all being spit out in this exact location, no one has an answer for. Although said information may be the nonsensical tales of the raving and the mad, there are some that point to a particularly disturbing similarity between certain wrecks and ships that are currently very much still operational, as if they are the ghost of a future tragedy. The Imperium very seldomly takes the accounts of the hated Xenos into consideration when divining the mysteries of the cosmos, but there may be some clue into the nature of the processional of the damned that comes in the form of Eldar wisdom. Although Humboldt was the first human to study the processional, there is evidence to suggest that the Eldari have known of its existence for quite some time. It is said that when they investigated lost ships of their own that had been drawn into its cold embrace, they found an entity of unimaginable horror. A creature said to be a sinkhole in reality, a dent in the fabric of time, and a creation of fate beyond fate. Whether or not any of this is true, or if the Eldari were able to gleam any more insight than this is unknown, as they are a species that are known for speaking in riddles and falsehoods. It, perhaps from their perspective, it was just a strange phenomena that bears little importance. However, actions speak louder than words, and the Eldari created a webway portal here, known as the Damned Gateway, that is known to connect to their domain within the Heathen Stars. Whether or not they still use this portal or when it was actually constructed is unknown, but it has been observed to be fully operational. Because of this, it's clear that they place some form of importance on this realm and all of its dead inhabitants. Of the rare few individuals that have visited this haunted place and returned to tell their tales, many of them make note of all form of strange and disturbing phenomena. As some speak of seeing strange shadows that drift between the wrecked hulks and deep within the dark corners of their holds, while others claim to witness individuals or vessels that they know to be alive and well multiple light years away in a desiccated and ruined state. There are tales of voices whispering over the Vox, beckoning the crews of rogue trader ships to join them in the void, many of these individuals being old friends or family members known to be long dead. It is as if every single aspect of this region is designed to wear upon the sanity of all those who visit. Most perplexing of all is that there are actually two documented species known to live here, the Hollow Men and humanoid creatures known as Wrath's Carrion. 
The Carrion are believed to be the descendants of the crewmen and women that had originally been part of Humboldt Wrath's crew, and have somehow survived for generations by scavenging the wrecks. Although these individuals are described in the reports as humans, there is something seemingly off about them, as if they are ghostly specters out of sync with time and space. What little contact has occurred over the Vox channels between adventurers and the Carrion indicates that they have no desire to stay here and have been attempting to escape for possibly generations, yet all attempts have failed, as if they are held enthralled by some ancient evil. They shriek and wail over the Vox, begging for deliverance, yet whenever they manage to issue a cry for help, the broadcast is always cut short without warning, as if whatever sentience presides over this place has no interest in providing them any form of agency. The Hollow Men, on the other hand, are far stranger, and it's not known if they are human, xenos, mutant, or something else entirely. Although humanoid in appearance, little of their actual features is known, as they always appear clad in scavenged moldy void suits. They normally reside in the deeper rings closer to the Black Star, and it's believed that they originate from one of the large dead planets caught in the procession's orbit. Although it is rare for them to move freely out in the open, the few times that they have been documented, they've been noted as drifting between the hulks and using scavenged equipment to break the ships down piece by piece until there is nothing left but a skeleton. The creepiest part about these guys is that even though actual undeniable sightings of them are incredibly rare, the reports indicate that those who enter this region believe that they are always there, always lurking in the corner of their vision or at the very far end of all of their Auspex scanners. The only real indicator of their presence being sudden angry bursts of white noise over the Vox channels or strange scraping sounds emitting from a vessel's outer hull. We may never know the true purpose of the Processional of the Damned, who created it and what their ultimate goal was in guiding so many lost souls and wrecked vessels to this one point in space and time. Although the forces of chaos are always the first culprit when it comes to the factors of the unknown, there are forces within this universe that we still have very little understanding of. It creatures, entities, and intelligences that are far more alien than even the strangest of known Xeno species. Perhaps everything can be explained. Maybe there is an undercurrent within the Sea of Souls that all dead ships eventually drift into. Maybe all of the strange Vox chatter and spectral anomalies are nothing more than the energy of the Black Star playing haywire with Auspex equipment and the human mind falling victim to paranoia. Or maybe it's something else, something far more ancient and disturbing, something that the human mind was not designed to comprehend, something that at best sees humanity in our broken ships as an idle curiosity, and at worst, may have yet unknown malevolent plans that may be too late to stop. But what do you think of this thing? What do you think is actually going on here? And do you know of any other creepy 40k mysteries that you'd love to hear me talk about? This weird obscure stuff from the outdated RPGs and other obscure reading material that most of the community has never touched is some of my favorite content to cover, so I'd love to hear your suggestions and theories down in the comment section below. Big thanks to everyone who supports the work that I do, and I will catch you all in the next one.